So, um, I, my name is Tim McKay, and I get the distinction of uh, being an executive vice president in the Growth and Regional Development Department at DART. And I get to, I get to do a lot of things in, in uh, my world, and I, I want to I acknowledge a few folks in the audience. Uh, first, uh, there's uh, Bonnie. Uh, Bonnie is our, our new vice president of Commuter Rail. And so she's also the director of the TRE, and so thank you for being here. I brought Bonnie. Uh, there's Rob Parks back here. Uh, Rob Parks is on our service planning group. So when you guys have the hard questions for me, guess who gets to answer? Um, uh, former Daddy, Dallas City Councilman uh, Ron Natinsky, it's always good to see you, sir. Thank you for being here. Um, there, are, there are a lot of, and I, I call some of y'all family. And why do I call you family? Because sometimes we argue and we fuss and we carry on, but we still work hard together and we get things done. You, you've heard some of the testimonies from some of my colleagues. Th this is not easy. If it was easy, then everybody would be doing it. And it is not easy. Uh, I, I want to say, Dennis, Paul, congratulations. I, I know how hard you guys have worked to get where you are today. And, you know, sometimes you can make it look so easy Everybody thinks they can do it, and they really don't know how hard this is. And so congratulations, fantastic job. Very well done. Uh, Denton County is, uh, I saw Raymond earlier. I don't know if he's still here. Um, uh, but, you know, in this region, it, it used to be where we, we had right away, we had corridors, we had money, we had everything that we needed to be able to do a project. And there wasn't a whole lot of interface. And everybody in the region was kind of that way. It's just not that way anymore. We are so dependent upon each other. And the reason why we're so focused on that is really for our patrons and the people in our areas that depend on us and that want to have a seamless system. You, you can go to your PDA and you can buy a ticket to ride any of the three properties that are represented here today. And you don't have to stop and get a ticket every time you get into a different property. And those are the kinds of things that we do together. Today I want to focus a little bit, I'm going to go pretty quickly through these, because uh, frankly if you haven't read about these or if you haven't been to one of the hundreds of meetings that we've had on some of these projects, I really don't have time to get you caught up today, but I want to, I want to give you a status of where we are at. Um, but before I do that, I'd be remiss if I didn't also talk about other things that we're doing. We got a mobility on demand grant. And what does that mean? We are looking at mobility. How do we leverage these assets? Rail, bus system, first mile, last mile, bike share, the, you know, the dockless bikes. I mean, good Lord, those things are everywhere. And, um, you know, it's, um, it's interesting. You know, it's interesting to see. There's Uber, there's Lyft, there was Bridge, now there's kind of Bridge 2.0. And, and so there's, there's all of these options and how do we manage all of that to where you can go to our GoPass app, uh, version 2.0 is coming out, and you'll be able to book a trip complete from your door to your destination using any or all of these partners. And those are the types of things that we are involved in right now, trying to manage that mobility to get people really where they want to go. When I first started in, in somewhat my current capacity about 17 years ago, the, the biggest thing that we were faced with is, wow, we, we like the system, but it just doesn't go where we want to go. We have 93 miles of light rail double track, 64 stations. We jointly own and operate the TRE, we're looking to advance our Cotton Belt project. We're looking to advance other projects, second alignment through downtown. And you say, okay, well, now we're starting to get to the places where people want to go. But we still have challenges and we still have barriers. And so we've got to focus on those things to make our service more attractive and bring those folks in. And so that's what, that's what we're focused on. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Cotton Belt. You know, at one time, I had to have a shield up here when I stood up here and talked about the Cotton Belt. Because I'm, I'm telling you, you'd get pelted. It was that bad. Uh, there was a time when DART was a four-letter word and not a good one. Okay? Um, and at the end of the day, over 30 years, you see how we have all become relevant and become important in the region. 
Um, you know, I saw on the news today, Dallas made the top 20, I guess it is, or 25 for Amazon. Okay, that ain't surprised anybody? Hmm? What me? Um, and, and why? There are so many things going on in this region. Look around at all the developments. Part of the challenge that we have is we're advancing these projects. It takes about seven years to advance one of these projects, and that's on a pretty quick time frame. Think about seven years ago and where we were in seven years. Ever tried to advance a project, kind of like D2, in the middle of a growing downtown area? If we could just take D2 and move it out of downtown Dallas, it would be a really easy project. But I haven't gotten a whole lot of traction with that idea yet. Um, but all the developments that keep popping up, and, and so, you, you know, you're almost in a perpetual planning mode trying to serve as many people as you can, and that's part of the challenge that we have. So the Cotton Belt, most of you know about this. Um, th this is where I'm very, very grateful to uh, Paul and his team because they're already out there making some of this happen and we're going to get to enjoy the, the, the fruits of, of the, that labor when we connect at DFW Airport. We will share a station out there, we'll share track, and then the idea would be eventually to have seamless operations that go across the entire corridor. And this is a fantastic project. Uh, you'll see the dip there goes down into Cypress Waters. If you haven't been out there and seen that development, it is just unbelievable. It's fantastic. Uh, as you come across, it will connect there with, with, uh, down, in downtown Carrollton. And, you know, frankly, downtown Carrollton's become, they're going to become the railroad mecca of North Texas because almost every single rail line crosses in downtown Carrollton. So if you're looking for a really great place to host or to have the, the, the 15th annual meeting uh, next year, that may be a really interesting place because of what's going on there in the, in the development and activity that you're going to see. And then, of course, as we go through Addison, fantastic opportunities there from a transit oriented development. Uh, as we go through North Dallas, a few challenges there, but we're working really hard to coexist with, with a, a very densely populated community. And by the time you get over to UT Dallas, by the time you get over to, you know, the, the uh, red line, um, now everything is starting to get connected. Why is that important to us? Because people don't have to come into downtown in order to get it across the corridor. It's going to be huge from a time-saving standpoint, and it's going to give a lot of flexibility to the system. Uh, these things you probably know, 26 miles. Uh, we have um, just a few grade crossings in that 26 miles, uh, 54 to be exact, or thereabouts. And so about every half mile, you've got to deal with a grade crossing. And that presents challenges. Um, you know, we want to improve mobility, obviously, but we want to make sure that we have really good interfaces, not just with our um, system, but also with uh, Paul's system in Fort Worth and with the system in DCTA so that we are, again, more seamlessly connected and people can take uh, the most efficient routes through. One of the other things that I would tell you is, is that we have three major packages that are going on right now. Some of you are competing for these. Uh, I can't tell you how good it is to look out there and see, you know, some of you that have been very, very helpful to us as we've built our system to where we are today, and I thank you. I also thank you for continuing to want to come back and work with us in order to advance these. So the, we have a design-build solicitation. We started with five. Uh, we've had two officially bow out of the competition, and we've got a heck of a competition going on, and I'll receive proposals here at the very beginning of March. So we'll be going through those, we'll be evaluating those, and then as soon as we get record of decision uh, from the FTA, the FRA, and the FAA, uh, all of the F-A, the, pretty much all of them have to give us a record of decision. Once we get all of those, then we can actually kick off the project and start moving forward. We, um, we're also looking at uh, owner's representation, and so we have a solicitation out for that. Some of you are competing for that. We got seven proposals. We're in the process of shortlisting that group, and here in February we will notify the shortlist to go forward uh, through the rest of the competition for that. And we will then queue that up on the same pathway with the design build solicitation, and as soon as we get records of decision, we will go ahead and trigger those and move those forward. The other thing is, is that um, we are looking, 
very heavily at vehicles. Uh, we, we have been in discussions with 11 vehicle manufacturers. Um, we'd like to think that this project is the most important project in the entire world, but when we're looking at maybe eight to 10 vehicles, the reality is um, it may not be. Uh, so, you know, we expect that we'll get two or three proposals in the vehicle uh, industry. We, uh, uh, we are hopeful that we can uh, possibly get the same vehicle that Fort Worth has chosen so that we can leverage those assets and, and, uh, and be able to continue to work together to save money in the, in, the, in the region. But the other thing we're doing is we're actually looking at having the EMF uh, as part of the vehicle uh, manufacturer's responsibility to put in. And the reason why I want to do that is I want to make sure that they have input in, we'll probably have an option in that contract for uh, car maintenance. Not sure where we're going to go with that yet, but I want to put some options in there. And they're either going to significantly lead the design and or build it, or they're going to significantly lead the design and then the design builder will actually build it. So I want the car manufacturer very, very much involved in the design of that facility. Um, I like this slide uh, mostly because of the traveling man. And the traveling man, uh, some of you may not recognize the traveling man, but if you Google him, the traveling man has more Facebook friends probably than all of us combined. Um, this is one of those icon things. And TexRail's got a cool name, right? We're the eastern side of the Cotton Belt. And I keep telling the marketing folks, you got to get a cool name too. I mean, you know, I can't compete out there in the marketplace if we don't have a cool name. So if you got any suggestions, I'm, I'm open for them. I'm just the colorblind engineer. They don't let me pick those things. It would be as some anachronism, you know, that wouldn't make a lot of sense. So, uh, but I like the traveling man. Um, all of these things are going to come together. Uh, the idea would be to have revenue service in 2021 or 2022. So I'm, I'm chasing Paul and his team, um, but um, I, don't know, I don't think I'm going to catch you guys, but I won't be too far behind you. Um, so the next thing that I want to talk about is D2. Um, see? Cool name, right? Um, second alignment through downtown. Uh, <clears throat> we've uh, spent a lot of time on this, and much like the Cotton Belt, the Cotton Belt, I'm pretty sure, has been in discussion for maybe 20 years at least. Um, it gets painful beyond that, so I just cut it up at 20 years. Uh, D2 has been something that's been a discussion topic for quite a while. And uh, a bit over a year ago, we had a complete revision to this project. Uh, we had a, an existing locally preferred alternative, and then it was decided that it needed to be more underground inside the downtown loop in order to to not negatively affect traffic and to be more beneficial to the developing community downtown. It took us about a year, but we managed to get through that process again with all the stakeholders downtown. And then we managed to get a locally preferred alternative here towards the end of last year. Now, as soon as we got that, then what happens? Well, the CIG program or the grant program in the Federal Transit Administration, we weren't actually sure that it was gonna continue to exist. And so now you're faced with, how do we deal with that? So we went through a lot of iterations on financial plans. And oh, by the way, I know you guys all do this. We are obligated to do a 20-year financial plan. And so we have to forecast revenues out 20 years. We have to forecast capital expenses, maintenance, operations, everything for 20 years. And so, you know, while we have this much money, we have to program that out over 20 years. And what this has allowed us to do now, we have an LPA being more favorable towards the CIG program. It looks like we may actually, hopefully, follow you and slip in, you know, and get a, a grant from the federal government. So uh, why is it important? It's really about core capacity. Right now, everything goes through two tracks in downtown. Okay? And, you know, every once in a while, if there is a high-rise fire, and the firemen show up, and they drag the hoses across the track. They really kind of hate it when we run them over. And so, you know, it'd be good to have some flexibility. When we are trying to serve uh, the State Fair of Texas, we have to completely redo for, now it's three days, it used to be just Texas OU, but now it's actually uh, the, um, uh, the Irish Parade in March. 
uh, one of our highest ridership days. And then also, usually it's the school day when all the kids are out of school going to the state fair. So we have some pretty high ridership days and we have to completely reconfigure our service downtown in order to efficiently serve people. So it gives us operational flexibility. And the other thing it does is gives us capacity to grow. Now by combining this project with a streetcar project, which I'll talk about in a minute, the connector, as well as platform extensions, we can increase our capacity, our throughput in downtown by almost 100%. And we have the capability to carry about 8,000 people an hour if we need to. And so we can nearly double that. Uh, so what's next on that? What we're doing right now is going through working on the CIG grant program. We're waiting for the FTA to tell us if we've asked for an extension in, in the preliminary engineering phase. Now that the CIG program looks like it's going to materialize, they'll tell us, yes, you can stay in the program, and then we're back off and running in square one. So in about a year, we should be in pretty good place where then we're going to start our solicitation for a design build for D2. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Streetcar Link. Streetcar Link is uh, pretty straightforward. We did have four alternatives, now we're down to three. Essentially, it is Commerce, it is Main Street, or it is Young. And I skipped over Young. Um, and as we're kind of funneling those down, it really has a lot to do with how do we connect services in downtown. Uh, our friends at Texas High Speed Rail are here. It's, uh, now, I don't know if anybody knows this, but this last year, Travis, was one of the top 40 under 40 in the nation. Um, fantastic young man, uh, been great pleasure to work with. He hates it when I do that, uh, but you know, it's Friday afternoon, Travis, and so happy Friday. <clears throat> and so the streetcar project will be that project that will connect the, the, the urban streetcar to the McKinney Avenue trolley and then we'll start looking at how we more efficiently run that system. The city of Dallas is also looking at maybe a 40 to 60 mile streetcar uh, network that would then be born out of that core capacity. So those of you that are kind of trying to figure out what's going on, what's the timing, I hope that helps. And um, at this point, I think I'll step aside and we probably have time for questions. Fantastic. Thank you very much.